Hi there, welcome to another quick and dirty edit by myself, Martin Gilman, a landscape photographer from the UK. Um, today I'm picking an image from a place called Saunton Sands, which is in uh, Devon uh, in the UK. Uh, this particular image has already been released by me um, commercially, but what I thought I would do would to go back to the raw image and just go through the basic edit that I did with it um, to give you an idea of how you can take a raw image such as this, which has already clearly got some promise, and just lift it uh, so it gets, gets a bit more pop and, uh, and some more interest. Now, the original edit I did of this was somewhat longer, but um, I'm going to cover more or less the same areas that I would have done, but I'm just going to be doing them a little bit more loosely, um, so you can see. But you can go through similar edits with similar looking images and uh, spend a bit more time at each stage, just making things that little bit better. But this will give you a good overview. Now, this is an unusual sunset for me. I don't often do cliches, as they call it, but uh, this particular one I really did like. And why do I like it? Well, I should start there because the choice of image and the success of images is very important to the photographer as much as the, the aesthetics itself. Um, I think that there are some stories in here. There is a, a particular attention to the composition, which you can see. It's a nice sunset with plenty of detail still, still in the sky. Um, but most of all, what I like about it is the way that we have these changing huts all the way across the bottom in a nice diagonal, interesting line. We've got lovely sun coming from the sunset, kicking in through the gaps uh, in the, the, uh, the scene, lighting up this area of foreground here, pouring in through there. Look, you can also see it fringing the, the edges of these bushes slightly. Uh, and, but most of all, I like these all these separate little... Um, almost Maori-like um, figures going about their business. If we start over to the right here, there's a couple there, maybe a little lover's couple having a kiss and a cuddle. We've got a little family group speaking here. We've got children running, families with pram, dog walkers communicating. We've got people out, right out, just paddling in the water. Uh, and we've got this lovely little cameo in here of this lady walking her dog. And she's right in line. That was quite intentional. I know that it's easy for me to say that now, but it was to catch her just as she followed the line with the sunset. So we got this horizontal shadow of her and the doggy walking and beautifully framed by this carving into the sand here where somebody used it for sport, volleyball or something like that. So it's got a lot of promise and it's also got some lovely glows in the sand which need to be pulled out of the image uh, in order to make it really pop. What's not so good about it, which needs work, areas of shadow because of the exposure settings that I had to use, of course, to get this to keep retain detail in the sky. So we've got lots of shadow here and dark areas, which we'll need to lift. We've got a couple of little distracting uh, reflections from buildings up on the uh, hill here, which we'll just clone out so that they don't t pull the eye away. Um, but that's really about it. It's got a lot of promise. Um, and so here's a very quick and dirty edit of it. I'll try not to talk too much. And I for forgive me if my computer's a little slow, it's an old Mac, but still very useful and I'm not going to go throwing money to save a couple of seconds on a video. So forgive me on that. My video making skills are still very much uh, in, in, in development. Right, so let's come out full screen by pressing F. And the first thing I'm going to do is look at my composition, just check my horizon straight. So go to crop, pull up our grid, and I can see it's a little bit off there. Always adjust your horizons, guys. It's just sloppy not to, and it takes that long to do it, and we haven't really lost anything. I believe, and I haven't tried it yet, in newer versions of Photoshop, you can do that, and it's content aware. So if you're worried about losing anything about along the edges of your frame, apparently it does something to assist with that. I haven't tried it yet. It won't work on all images. I've got a feeling on some it'll look a little bit awful, but um, on this particular one it doesn't matter. So there we have our, uh, our uh, horizon corrected. I'm going to start from the top down and I'm going to be looking at the sky. I think this sky can pop. Remember it's a raw image, so at the moment it's very flat and a lot of detail needs to be brought out. So I'm not going to use a, a graduated filter because we have this area over the side there, which it, a, a straight line graduated filter will affect. So we're going to use an adjustment brush. Clarity, okay, don't put too much clarity around your image, it makes it look crunchy. But it's great for skies as you might have seen in some other videos. I'm just going to check it's not too high, not too low. There's a bit of contrast in it. I'm going to push some noise reduction in it because as you adjust skies, skies already tend to pick up a bit of noise anyway, even at just ISO 400 here. And we're just going to paint that in. And already you can see, excuse the scratching sounds, but we're using a local mic here. But it's what you see that matters. And you can see already, look at that popping. Nice soft death brudge so I don't 
brush so I don't get too much where I don't want it to be. I'm not too worried about encroaching on the C there because that won't hurt at all. When I've done that, I'm just going to let go of my last button and just hover over it and just see well, I've got it all in. Okay, a little bit there that I've missed it. Back again. Lovely. Okay, and this is a quick edit, so I can just look at that. I'm happy with that. A little bit more and a little bit of dehaze will also just give it some punch. Look at that. Look at that. Wow. And bring down the highlights a little bit. Lovely. Touch of colour. And it's warmer than that when we were there. Lovely. Switch that on and off. Look at the sky difference. Wow. Yeah. Raw image. Edited image. Real difference. Okay. Close that down. Next area is my shadows. Too much shadow. So overall in the uh, image, I'm going to think about that. I don't really want to play with it too much because I'm going to end up um, affecting the sky. So I'm just going to take that up a little bit. And if I feel I need more, then I'm going to have to use a graduate filter or something so that I don't affect the whole of the image. That's enough. You can already see, if I go to a comparison, that we started to pull shadow out and light here. I don't want to go too far with that. Okay, guys, if I go too far, I'll generate noise and we'll start to have what some people refer to as a muddy image. Sometimes they refer to that as a softness to it, but uh, from my point of view, I think the combination of softness and noise creates a sort of a muddy, yucky looking effect. So we don't want to go too far with that. So looking good. I'm just going to drop this out of the way so we get a bit more of a screenshot. Not too bad, but now the way I'm looking at this image is I want to start pulling out some of these areas of light cast by our sunset. There's a strip across here. There's an area here as it pours in from behind the changing hut gap here. And also this ridge of grass here would normally be a little bit brighter than it, than it is. First thing I'm going to do is add some contrast to this outcrop. Again, with my adjustment brush, I use clarity in this particular case. Again, because... No, I'm going to change my mind. Let's go to shadows. Let's lift the shadows first up here. Let's do it a little bit locally. Now, I've gone too far straight away, as you can see, but it does let me know And my brush has been... What we can do is we can tone that down in a minute. So I've lifted that and I've done it locally because what I don't want to do is lift all the shadows completely and that's too much. So I'm going to bring it back down. I'm going to add a little bit of contrast and a little bit of clarity. There. That's better. Um, oh, that's much better. Okay. Close that down. Now what I'm going to do, quick and dirty edit, I'm going to start to bring out some of these areas of light. That's already doing quite well, but it needs a bit more. This strip across here needs something. And this patch here needs something, again, just to make it pop. So what we're going to do is we're going to use another local area adjustment. And I think we'll start with this one, actually. And we'll just do a nice long section. I've gone too far there. Look, too big, got a bit excited. Move that in there up a little bit fit my area I want to include this dog walker and the shadow so we pop that and you can already see with the existing settings I've got with the shadows being lifted we've got something but I prefer actually to use whites because I want to get a glow look at that I'll pop a little bit of clarity in there about like that and form a black there right look at that as I turn it on and off you see how that picks that up? That's lovely, and we want that, that adds interest. That's that's real light that's being cast in the image, but I've just pulled it out. This is a raw image, and we're pulling the details and the lovely areas of highlight and shadow out to give it that much more interest. It's a little bit hard at the moment, so I'm just gonna adjust my feather. There we go, that's better. Now what I can do is I can hold, hover over this, control, click, and duplicate it to save me some uh, time, and then I can play with this. Change the shape and then drag it to a new area over here. And that just saves me recreating the uh, area. I can just reuse it, but just reshape it. Okay. Again, I'm not gonna tell you everything I'm doing here because a lot of it's obvious. And I'm just doing it quick and dirty and rough. Duplicate that. I'll take one of these up here. Now I've got to shrink it again because it's going to be a different one. 
you might think I'm dragging it out here and I could probably do this a bit faster by drawing a new shape every time. That might be the case, but now you can already see as I do that, the difference on that cliff side there. Look, look at that popping in and out. Okay, so that's giving us a little bit of extra detail and some punch. I'm going to close that. I could spend more time on that, playing around with it, getting a bit better, but we won't do it at this stage. That's looking quite good. I'm going to lift the shadows a little bit more. I'm going to have a little bit of overall contrast. Do you see the difference there? Wow. And I'm going to bring the vibrance up because this is still flat as a pancake because it's a raw image, but now look at that. Now we're getting there. And I, am I don't think I need to warm it anymore because it's pulled the natural warmth out anyway. It was that kind of evening. I am just going to lift the shadows a little bit more because I'm not quite happy that I've got, I need some detail in these areas. I'm quite happy with that. Let's just compare that. Wow, look at the difference, guys. And that actually is beginning to look like it looked on the day. Lovely. So two final things to do. Remove these two little distractions up here. Bomb, bomb, and then sharpen it. Go quickly over into Photoshop. Pardon me, it's taking a little longer than I expected. Here it comes. Who thinks it's time Martin Gilman got a new Mac computer, huh? This is a 2011 iMac. Um, I boosted the RAM, but it's still a little bit slow. Okay, really quickly, uh, I'm just going to zoom in there. Really quickly use healing brush, because this is a fast edit. There you go, that's all I'm gonna do, file. No point to say it's quick and dirty if it isn't quick and dirty, but that was a distraction and needed to go. Right, file, close all them. It's obviously saved back now into Lightroom. I use a sharpening plugin by Nick Software Output Sharpener. Edit that. It's got to open it up. It's just been a bit slow between programs today. Here it comes. You'll have to play with your own settings. I know roughly where these these things should be for my style of photography and this type of image. I've just got to be careful I'm not too sharp in certain areas. Okay, that's good. Okay, that's good. Save that. Last thing you do, guys, sharpen. And once that's finished being processed, boom. Quick comparison before and after. In fact, that's not a correct comparison because that is actually a previous save. So That's just about it. Back to this image, full screen, Saunton Sands at sunset. I hope you enjoyed that quick and dirty edit. Thank you very much for watching. Bye bye.